Hi guys, this is Daryl and welcome back to Book Odyssey. Today I'm going to be reviewing the sci-fi classic The War of the Worlds by H.G. Wells. No one would have believed in the last years of the 19th century that this world was being watched keenly and closely by intelligences greater than man's and yet as mortal as his own that as men busied themselves about their various concerns they were scrutinised and studied, perhaps almost as narrowly as a man with a microscope might scrutinise the transient creatures that swarm and multiply in a drop of water. Yet across the gulf of space, minds that are to our minds as ours are to those of beasts that perish, intellects vast and cool and unsympathetic, regarded this earth with envious eyes, and slowly and surely drew their plans against us. And early in the 20th century came the Great Disillusionment. The War of the Worlds by H.G. Wells is possibly one of the most well-known classic science fiction novels, being first published serially by Pearson's Magazine in the UK and by the Cosmopolitan Magazine in the US in 1897. The War of the Worlds chronicles the events of a Martian invasion as experienced by an unidentified male narrator and his brother. The story begins when several observatories spot flashes of light on the surface of Mars. A year later, a falling star crashes in rural England, only it isn't a star, it's an invader from Mars. As panic and terror seize the population, we follow the story through the point of view of the unnamed narrator as he attempts to cross the country to reunite with his wife. While bearing witness to the destruction and death caused by the alien's huge three-legged tripod machines, and the derailment of civilization as he knows it, as the Martians tramp across the country, incinerating all in their path with their heat rays and spreading noxious toxic gases, the people of Earth must come to terms with the prospect of the end of the human civilization and the beginning of Martian rule. The War of the Worlds is considered a landmark work of science fiction and has inspired numerous adaptations and imitations. There are a number of interesting characters throughout the book, which is quite a feat considering it's a pretty short book by today's standards. As I mentioned before, the narrator or the main protagonist of the story is an unidentified nameless man. The only thing we know about him to begin with is that he's writing the story after the events, so spoiler alert, he survived. Despite us knowing very little about him and Wells taking zero time to do the thing where the character looks in the mirror so the author can describe the character's looks, which side note I hate, I found I cared about what happened to the narrator for a number of reasons. Firstly, he cares deeply about his wife and her safety, which humanised him for me, and also importantly because while he is the narrator, he's not the hero in the typical sense and at points throughout the book does questionable and outright unhero-like things, but this humanised him for me all the more and made him relatable. We also get to learn some of what happened through the narrator's brother, who comes off as more of a hero type, and it's through this switching of stories that we get a sense of the panic and terror as the Martians attack London. As we switch back to the main character, he encounters a number of people, most of which are not always presented in the best light, even the narrator himself, which I've said. This leads nicely onto one of the main themes I found within the story, and that's about how the Martian attack ultimately strips away people's civility. There are incidents and characters in the book that show the best of what people can be in times of panic and disarray, like the narrator's brother, for example, who comes to the rescue of two women in distress. But there are also incidents and characters that depict the worst side of people in an emergency situation. Some of these incidents, I have to say, shocked me a little. There are suggestions that some people resorted to cannibalism, at least this is how I interpreted it, which wasn't something I was expecting to read from a book written in the late 1800s. I'm not sure why, but I liked it. There's also a character who the narrator meets that has a vision for how humanity can survive the invasion, and his ideas are pretty fascist in their nature, and he talks about killing off the weak for the sake of mankind's ability to rebuild itself. Natural selection, survival of the fittest, are often themes I found prevalent within the book. Wells goes into the hubris of humanity thinking that it's the most intelligent creature on earth, and that they're used to thinking themselves superior, so much so that when the Martians first land, they think they'll be taken care of within a day or two. 
What Wells also does really well and explores through the narrator is how it feels to first believe yourself superior only to realise that in the face of something larger and more intelligent, you're as insignificant as how a human would treat a colony of ants. I felt the first inkling of a thing that presently grew quite clear in my mind, that oppressed me for many days. A sense of dethronement, a persuasion that I was no longer a master, but an animal among the animals, under the Martian heel. With us it would be as with them, to lurk and watch, to run and hide. The fear and empire of man had passed away. The writing itself almost reads more like horror than sci-fi in some respect, in that Wells uses the darkness of night and the alien horror of the Martians in descriptions that set an atmospheric and unsettling scene. I think everyone is aware of the infamous Orson Welles radio production of The War of the Worlds in 1938. If you're not, I'll leave a link to an interesting article in the description. But this production had a supposedly caused nationwide hysteria in America because people convinced themselves the Earth was actually being attacked by invaders from Mars. Apparently there were reports of mass stampedes, of suicides, and of angered listeners threatening to shoot Orson Welles on sight. Before reading the book, I found this a little hard to believe, but with the intense first-person point of view, the descriptions and the unsettling tone of the book, I can almost believe that some people might have wound themselves up a little bit too much. I will say that while for the majority of the story I was completely engaged, I did find myself drifting towards the beginning of the book when Wells goes into great detail about the different villages that he passes. While it's great that he went into this detail as it adds realism, all the place names just merged into a giant blob of words that my eyes just kind of skimmed over. I also found myself reading certain words from a modern reader's perspective. When Wells talks about vehicles, it's hard to remember that he's talking about horses and cart mostly. He also uses words such as flying, which I stupidly took literally at first, and also words that generally mean something completely different today, like ejaculation, which don't even get me started on. Overall, I found the writing to be surprisingly evocative and personal, with a masterfully written and introspective character. It's hard to review anything by H.G. Wells without at least touching on the historical influences of his work. The War of the Worlds is arguably one of the most well-known science fiction stories ever written, and it's arguably among the first two, at least science fiction as we know it today. While it's not entirely accurate in the science elements of the story, many of the ideas and theories have either been disproved or superseded, for me it didn't detract from my enjoyment of the story. If you haven't watched my video on classic versus modern sci-fi, I'll leave a link to it here because I go into this a little bit more there. Obviously, there have been many adaptations of this piece of work, but after reading the book, I have to say that none have really captured it like Wells did in his own words. Without going into spoiler territory too much, I found that the later adaptations left a lot of stuff out, either because they thought it paints the protagonist in a less than heroic light, or because they wanted to dumb it down for audiences. I don't know. I found that many adaptations also tend to leave out a lot of the aspects of the Martian physiology, which Wells goes into great detail, and also the fact that the giant tripod machines, which are iconic, were not the only machines the Martians used. Some of these other machines are described with surprising foresight, considering Wells lived in an age when the bicycle hadn't been long invented. Overall, as a piece of sci-fi, I completely understand how it has stood the test of time and remains a classic even today. It's engaging, personal, gripping in places, and, in my view, way ahead of its time. So, with that in mind, I gave H.G. Wells' War of the Worlds 4 stars out of 5. I'd love to get your thoughts on the War of the Worlds in the comment section. So that's it for my review, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please hit the like button if you did, and also subscribe if you want to see more videos from me. We talk about all things books here, mostly sci-fi with a bit of fantasy too. So until next time guys, happy reading.